Hi, this is Bob Bruns with the Link 4 Corporation, and today we're here to set the mechanical limits on the lock gear motor to the iDrive 300. The lock gear motor comes in at a variety of voltages, however, regardless of the motor that you have, the gearbox limits will adjust the same way. In order to set the mechanical limits on the lock motor and gearbox, the first thing you have to do is expose the motor limits. The electrical motor is at the top of the gearbox with the high voltage connections for the electrical motor. Below it, on the gearbox itself, we have the plate that covers the limit assembly. In order to get to the limit assembly, you must remove the four bolts and the cover plate. Now that we've removed the four bolts, we'll remove the cover and expose the limit assembly. You'll notice a rubber, gear, a rubber gasket with some tools mounted in it. These tools are used for the adjusting of the limits. We have the Allen wrench that is for the tightening and loosening of the limit screws. We have the drive pin for the motor so you can move the motor and gearbox without any power. And you have the vent plug that will be installed in the motor and gearbox once it's installed into a rack and pinion or shade system. In order to set the mechanical limits, we need to first understand that the motor has two distinct directions. We have motor direction 1 and motor direction 2. In motor direction 1, the shaft will go in this direction. In motor direction 2, it will go in the opposite direction. The motor is factory wired for these directions. Now that we've talked about the direction 1 and direction 2 of the motor, we'll talk about the internal limits. We have a brass delineator. On the right, we have direction 2 limits, and on the left, we have the direction 1 limits. For our purposes, direction 2 is the closed direction of the motor. Our vent is fully closed, and we're going to go ahead and set the direction 2 limit. Before you can ever set either limit, you have to make sure that the limit screws are loose. You can see that there are three screws, one, two, three, on the closed side, and one, two, three, on the open side. Those are the screws that have to be loose. When they're loose, you'll be able to move the limit assembly without moving the motor. What we have to do is get all three screws lined up in the detents dropped into the switch. The switch will drop into the detents and you'll notice now that they are more difficult to move because of the tension of the switch. We then will tighten the closed limits. The closed limits are now set. We'll then run the motor in the open direction until the vent is in the full open position. For our purposes, we'll just run it for a few seconds. Now the open limits, we're going to do the same thing. We have our three detents, one, two, three, and we're going to drop them into the switches. Once they drop in, the switch drops into its spot, and we lock them down.
We'll then go back in the closed direction. The motor stops on its limit. Back in the open direction. The motor stops on its limit. Once we've done that, you'll also take note that we have a primary and a secondary limit, and the secondary limit is automatically set up in the limit adjusting procedure. So the once you do this limit assembly adjustment, both your primary and secondaries are adjusted. Be sure to always reference to your instruction manual when installing a motor and gearbox to ensure the proper installation. If you have any questions, you can always feel free to contact us at Link 4.